Hello everyone, this is Ricky Scapero of End Time Headlines. Guys, I got a message that I want to, that uh, when I was studying the other night, uh, it's out of Mark chapter 4, uh, what you're seeing right here, Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. Um, some stuff in this pass in these uh, passages kind of leaped out at me. I jotted down some notes, and I just want to kind of give you what the Holy Ghost gave me, and I feel like this will be a great blessing for you. So if you bear with me for the next few moments, I really believe this will be a, a very edifying and encouraging word um, and give you some insight on some stuff in the Scriptures. Okay, so here we go. Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through 41. On the same day when evening had come, and this is Jesus speaking. He said unto them, Let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern. Come on, say he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said unto him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing. And then he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said unto them, quote, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the seas obey him? Okay, so I want to bring out some stuff. First of all, I want to show you... Uh, that they were on a mission. When Jesus said, get into the boat and let us go to the other side, there was a purpose in which they were going. And I, uh, when they were going to a place called the Gadarenes, in which there was a demon-possessed man bound by a legion of spirits whom would be set free. So the whole purpose to Christ in this mission to bring the disciples to the other side was to set one man free. And I got to tell you this, when the Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. Okay, so everywhere that the Lord leads you and directs you through prayer, through intercession, and through your secret place, when you're praying and you're asking the Lord to lead you and direct you and to bring you into divine appointments, it doesn't matter how big, how small, how great, or how little. Wherever the Lord leads you, it's for a purpose. The Bible says there's for every every there's a uh, there's a purpose and a plan for every season under heaven. Again, there is no accidents in a child of God's life as long as he is remains in the will of God. So again, they were on their way to bring revival to a city that would ultimately reject it. I'm gonna say it again. They were on their way to bring revival to a city. That would ultimately, look, listen, the city would reject it, but the man would receive it. I'm going to say it again. The city would ultimately reject it. And I'll show you that in a minute in Mark chapter 5. The city would ultimately reject it, but the man and his household received it. Okay? All right. Now, here's something else I want to show you. Notice that when Jesus told his, the, the disciples, he said, he didn't say, let me go to the other side. He said, let us, plural tense. In other words, Jesus said, I'm going to be with you guys, and if I'm, I, I have a purpose, and I'm on my way somewhere, as long as you allow me to get in the boat, wherever you go, it doesn't matter what winds come, what storms come, and what disasters might lie ahead, as long as I'm in the stern. Come on. It says, and a great windstorm arose. Why did this windstorm arise? Because it came as adversity and opposition to not stop the move, the move of God, because you cannot stop the move of God. You can only hinder it. Come on. Somebody needs to hear that today. Listen, if God has a plan for your life, all hell can come against you, but it, it will not stop you, but it can delay you again. It will not. The, the kingdom of hell cannot stop you, but it can delay you. Paul said, I often would desire to come to you many times. He talks about this in, in the, to the church of Corinth, but Satan hindered me. So notice he says, it says a great windstorm arose. Now, who brought the windstorm? It wasn't God. It was the devil. The devil brought the windstorm because, listen, that man who was bound by that legion was so important in the eyes of God because God knew that when this man would be set free, that he would go back to his home, he would go back to his neighborhood, and he would begin to preach. He'd begin to testify what God did for him, and it would be so powerful 
that the witness of that would stir up that whole city or I'm sorry, that whole region or his neighborhood, his family. And if, if God can set, a, if one can set a thousand a flight, two can set 10,000 a flight, my friend. So uh, the devil understood the influence of this. And this is why he brung this adversity. So, and, and remember in Jonah's life, in Jonah's story, the storm was brought by the Lord because Jonah was out of the will of God. But here, G Christ and the disciples was in the will of God. And the waves beat upon the boat and it was already filling. But listen to verse 38. You need to highlight this. He was in the stern. Have you ever heard? There was a great song years ago by, my, uh, 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 wow, I done forgot his name. Um, uh, his last name was Bolton. I can't remember his first name right off the bat, but if it comes to me, I'll tell you. But um, he had a, a song called The Anchor Holds, and it was one of the most powerful songs. I love that song. Um, it's sad for that man because he later on uh, went into homosexuality, but nevertheless, it was called The Anchor Holds, um, and it was a great song, and this is what we're talking about. Listen, it don't matter what winds come. It don't matter what storms come. As long as he's in the stern and as long as the anchor holds, my friend, it's going to be okay. Okay, now I'm going to show you another example of what I'm talking about in Acts chapter 27. Okay, let's read this. Um, Acts chapter 27, verse 10, Paul speaking, and he says, Men, and first of all, let me give you a little backdrop. He's sailing to Rome, and this is uh, he, uh, he's a prisoner then. He's put on a boat for a business trip on a boat, and they're sailing to Rome for business. But Paul, being filled with the Holy Ghost, says, Men, I perceive that this voyage will end with disaster and much loss, not only of the cargo and ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, watch this, the centurion was more persuaded by the helmsman and the owner of the ship than by the things spoken of Paul. He was more concerned of his career, his job, and the, the cargo than he was of the people and of their lives. He was driven by money, driven by wealth, and driven by uh, position. This is kind of like Pontius Pilate. You remember in the New Testament when Pontius was putting Jesus before the council, and he says, do you not know what authority I have to give you, to have you either crucified or set free? And the Lord spoke to him and said, uh, Every, all the authority that you've been given has been given to you only because my Father has been given it, given it to you, and he has given me authority as well. Remember that story? But you also so remember Pontius Pilate's wife had dreams in which she warned Pontius and his wife of, uh, of, of trying to put, do harm to Christ. Remember, because Pontius came, uh, Pontius' wife came to him and said, I've had many troubling dreams about this man. Don't do him any harm because he is a righteous man. It's in your Bible. But listen, the Bible says uh, Pontius Pilate was more worried and concerned about his position with Caesar than he was with Christ. Therefore, he, wow, his persuasion was not of righteousness, but it, his persuasion was of wealth and power. And because of that, he ended up wiping it. He took his, he put his hands into a basin of water and he wiped his hands clean of the blood of Christ. And the Jews spoke out and said, let his blood be upon us and our children. But watch this. The centurion was more persuaded by the helmsman and the owner of the ship than by the things spoken by Paul. Okay, so what happened? Well, uh, we all know the story. The Bible says, let me go over here. I don't know why I cut out. Let me see if I can go to the whole verse here. Acts 27. Okay. Um, and then it says, Nevertheless, this, and then it says, and because the harbor was not suitable to, uh, to winter, and the, uh, the majority of buyers to set sail from there also, if by means they could reach Phoenix, a harbor of, of Crete opening towards the southwest and northwest and winter there. Okay, now, here we go. We go down here to verse 13. When the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their desire, putting out to sea, they sailed close by Crete, but not long after a tempestuous head wind. Uh, that's exactly what we're talking about in uh, Mark chapter 4 here, uh, uh, called Erocladon. So when the ship was caught 
and could not head into the wind, we let her drive, and running under the shelter of an island called Clauda, we secured the, I believe that's Skyfe, with difficulty. When they had taken it on board, they used cables to undergird the ship, and fearing lest they should run aground on uh, the, 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 the Sirtis and Sands, they struck sail, and so were driven, and because we were exceedingly tempest uh, tempest tossed the next day they lightened the ship on the third day we threw the ship's tackle overboard with our hands now when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and no small tempest beat on us all hope that we would have been saved was finally given up in other words hope was depleting but watch what happens my friends uh so it goes on i don't want to read all this here's where i want to get verse 33 and as day was about to dawn, Paul implored them to take all, uh, them all to take food, saying, "Today is the fourteenth day. You have waited." He he called a fast, my friends. This is what happened, and he says to eat nothing. Therefore, I urge you to take nourishment, for this is for your survival, since not not a hair will fall from the head of any of you. When he had said these things, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. So. Uh, I want to read on. It says that uh, basically an angel of the Lord. Here it is. Verse 21. I skipped over this. But after long absence from food, then Paul stood in the midst of them and said, quote, men, you should have listened to me. Listen, you better listen to a Holy Ghost filled believer when they speak, when they speak. When a man of God or a woman of God hears from God, we need to listen. And you should have not sailed from Crete. And incurred this disaster and loss. How many times has the Lord told you not to do something and you went ahead and did it? How many times has the Lord said, don't get with this girl, don't get with this guy and mess with them because it's going to be a disaster, but you go ahead and do it anyway. And the Lord says, don't put money in this, don't invest in something, you're going to lose and you do it anyway. The Lord says, uh, you know, there's going to be bad storms, don't do this, and you go ahead and do it anyway, and, and stuff happens, right? Because we go against sound wisdom, we go against the Holy Ghost, and listen, he says, and now, he says, I told you, I warned you not to sail from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss, and now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only the ship, for there stood by me this night an angel of God, to whom I belong and whom I serve. Wow, oh, come on, somebody. This is powerful. Paul's saying here, basically, no uh, un uncertain terms. He's saying, an angel of the Lord appeared to me tonight, not for your sake, but for my sake. Because he says, an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve. Remember when Peter showed up at Rhoda's house and the Bible says, they said, oh, and uh, when Rhoda ran back and said, Peter's standing outside, and they said, oh, you're crazy. It, it's not Peter, it's his angel. Because, my friends, there's angels of God that are assigned to each and every one of us. For what? To watch over us. The Bible says the angel of the Lord encamps around about those who fear him and delivers them out of their troubles. That's Psalms chapter 34 verse 7. The book of Job says uh, when Satan and, and God was having a conversation, Satan looks at God and says, Have you not put a hedge about his possessions, about his family, about all that he has? You put a hedge about him, my friends. It's the angels of the Lord. And Paul says, that an angel of the Lord stood by him that night saying, quote, do not be afraid, Paul. You, you, not them, you must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those who sail with you. Oh, I'm going to say something right here. You know, a lot of times, I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but somebody's listening to this and you're not even right with God, but you have somebody in your family, a friend, somebody in your church, a, a neighbor, a relative, a co-worker, whatever, that is serving God. They're full of the Holy Ghost. And there's been times in your life that you should have died in a car accident, but God spared you, not because of you, because you don't even have a covenant with God, but it was because you just so happened to be in the right presence at the right time 
and in the right place. In the presence of who? In the presence of a believer who has a covenant with God, who has an angel of the Lord who's with them, who has a purpose, and it is not yet their time. So no devil in hell can take them out. So when you when you should have died in a car accident, but because they just so happened to be in the vehicle with you, God was not going to permit your vehicle to be in that car accident because God has a purpose for that man or that woman who is in covenant. Somebody should have, uh, there's been many altercations where uh, just because of the presence of a person with a covenant of God was around you, with you, uh, in, in contact with you, whatever, in your presence, God supernaturally spared you from whether it be a car accident, a plane crash, whatever the case may be. Man, I really feel that 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 relates to somebody that you should have died, but God spared you not because of you, because you were not even in covenant with God, but because there was a Holy Ghost filled believer in your presence today. My friend, that should that should convict you, if anything, and that should make you want to repent and get right with God today, my friend. But listen, here's what I want to tell you. What's my point? Paul had a purpose to get to Rome. And God was going to see to it what the devil intended for evil. God used for good to get him over to Rome because he was going to go over there and talk to governmental authority and have influence in that position. Golly, this is powerful. And there were souls to win in Rome. So my friends... There is a purpose and a plan for every season under heaven. And my friends, the whole purpose why Jesus was in the boat and the disciples to go uh, to get, was to get over to the Gadarenes because there was a man. Now, let's go there now. Um, let me back up here. We're going to go to Mark chapter 5. So they get to, you know, we know the story. The storm comes, it beats. The disciples wake up in Christ and he says, have you no faith? He rebukes the storm. They get to the other side. Come on, they rebuke the hindrance. They rebuke the obstacles. They rebuke the adversity. Come on, some of y'all just need to, the Bible says all authority. Uh, he says, I've given you authority over, over the powers of the enemy, over serpents and scorpions, and over all the powers of the enemy. The same power that raised Christ in the dead, dwelt, uh, raised Christ from the dead, dwells in you and quickens your mortal bodies. Uh, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. He says, if you shall speak unto this mountain, be thou removed and not doubt in your heart, but believe in those things in which you say, you shall speak into this mountain, uh, be thou removed and cast thyself into the sea, and it shall be done unto you. What mountain is in your way? What obstacle is in your way? What adversity? Some of you has been called to a region, called to a city, called to a, a family member, called to a co-worker, and it seems like every day there's some adversity. There's some hell coming to get you. Well, duh, no wonder, my friends, because God knows the end from the beginning, and the enemy has a a, a partial revelation because he sees the sphere, the sphere of influence that that individual or individuals can have again my friends it's not about one soul it's about all the individuals that that one soul after they are saved will reach remember billy graham was just billy graham but that one individual that witnessed to billy graham had no idea that billy graham would be raised up to reach millions for the lord when when reinhardt bonky who who led reinhardt bonky to the lord well whoever led him to the lord had no idea and the uh, and the uh, the sovereignty of God that down the road that Reinhard Bonnke would be an apostle to the nations and reach millions, but the enemy understood this. And I guarantee, if you go back and look, there was much adversity. Paul said, "A great and effectual door has opened unto me, and with it much adversity." My friends, just keep pressing through, keep going through the storm, because when you get through the storm and you get to the other side, there is the man there at the gatherings and here's what it is mark chapter 5 and then they came to the other side of the sea to the country of the gatherings and when he came out of the, the boat immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no one could bind him not even with chains because he had often been bound with shackles and chains and the chains had been pulled apart by him and the shackles broken in pieces Neither could any man tame him. And always, <clears throat> night and day, he was in the mountains and the tombs, crying out, cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from afar off, 
he ran and worshipped him. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, quote, What have I to do with you, Christ, or Jesus, the Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. And one, one translation said, Before thy time. For he said unto them, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And then he asked him, What is your name? And the spirit answered and said, My name is Legion, for we are many. He also begged him earnestly that he would not send him out of the country. And now a large herd of swine was feeding. I'm going somewhere, guys, so just bear with me. There was a large herd of swine feeding near the mountains. So all the demons begged him, saying, Send us to the swine that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission. Notice that the, the demons went into what was considered to be unclean. Then the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. And there was about 2,000. Because remember, a legion is thousands. And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. Okay, and then <clears throat> I'm going to read the rest of this in just a second. I'm going to show you stuff, show you some stuff that, that, that I really want you to understand about Mark chapter 5. Okay? Okay, it says, first of all, Let's look at these practical application of these passages. First of all, the demon-possessed man was bound and he was dwelling in tombs. Listen to me, my friend. Many believers today are bound and demonically oppressed because they make their dwelling in dead churches and hang out with dead people. Come on, somebody. Listen, how are you going to get set, set free when you're in a church that does, not, that does not believe in the operation of the Holy Spirit? They don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit of God. They don't believe that you can be set free because they don't even believe that you can be oppressed of the devil. They don't even believe in the devil. <clears throat> they don't believe in hell. They don't teach on hell. There's no, there's no teaching. There's no ministry on the operation of freedom. There's no operation and teaching on liberation. There's no operation and teaching on deliverance. And because of that, they're dwelling. In, there's no worship. There's no freedom and praise. Come on. A, a dead, dry church full of dead, dry Christians. And listen, my friends, I can always tell the condition of a man or a woman's spirituality <clears throat> by the type of church that they like to live and dwell in. Ugh, let me say it again. I can always tell the, 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 the condition of a man's uh, heart by the, by the type of church and the type of individuals that he likes to associate with. Oh, listen, those that are, that are on fire and burning for Jesus will always get around people like-minded that are burning for Jesus, doing things for Jesus, witnessing for Jesus, turning their cities upside down, casting out devils, laying hands on the sick, raising the dead. But however, uh, you'll, find it, you'll find it very uh, saddening that those that are dead themselves have no spirituality. They have no hunger for the word, no hunger for prayer, no urgency. They're not leading anybody to the Lord. They want to they want to hang around with dead, apathetic, lily livered, spineless uh, Christians that have no witness. They have no authority. They have no backbone. They don't preach on sin. They, they have no urgency for people. They don't care if people are going to hell. They don't care if they read their Bible. They have no prayer life. Come on, somebody. They're dead men uh, d dwelling in white sepulcher tombs full of dead man's bones. And it's true. So this, this demon-possessed man was a dead man because he was bound, but he remained in dead places because as long as you're cold, you will remain in cold places. But if my friend, if you ever get into a place that's burning for Jesus, whatever is not burning in you will catch flame and start burning inside of you. Whew. Come on, get out of those dead, dry churches. Get away from those dead people. Jesus, listen, <clears throat> one time I read, you know the verse where it says, a man came to Jesus and he says, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go, but let me first go <clears throat> and bury my father. Let me get a drink here, guys, real quick. Man, we were, <clears throat> excuse me, we were praying last night at the prayer barn in Cleveland, Tennessee, and I was praying, and man, I blew my voice out, and and so it's it's trying to go back out again. So you guys pray for me, but um, the the man pleaded with Christ. He said, "Let me go bury my my father, and when I'm done with that, I'll come and follow you." And Jesus said, "Let the bury let the dead bury the dead. You come and follow me." When I first read it, I was like, "My God, man, that's that's cruel. That's rude." But the Lord spoke to me. He said, "Son, if you go back to dead things." 
then it's going to come on you and what what you came out of that was dead is going to get in you and you're going to be bound by dead things and you're going to remain in dead things come on that's why you got to let the dead bury the dead you got to burn bri that's why a lot of you can't even uh, remain on fire for God because every time God starts a fire in you you keep going back to dead things and that dead stuff gets back on you and before you know it it's chokes out of all the life out of you come on number two it says that men try to bind this man with chains and fetters listen many dead churches that are full of religion and, tra and the traditions of men will ne never set people free. Instead, they always bind them, bind them with laws and regulations and rules and obligations. And remember, Jesus said these Pharisees, they'll travel land and sea and make uh, one convert worse than the, de more of a worse of, of a convert of the devil of hell than they are. And they put heavy burdens on these people and they themselves won't lift one finger. My friend, when you get in dead churches that have no authority, and they don't operate in the spirit of God, all it's going to do is you're going to be in bondage because you come in and leave the, sa you leave the same way you came in. You come in bound in chains and fetters, and you leave, with bound, leave bound with chains uh, uh, and, and fetters. And, and there's no authority to set you free. Not even a leadership has authority to set people free. I heard, again, I've said this before, but I heard a pastor one time with my own ears say in front of a congregation of, of over a, a couple thousand people, he said, if you hear from God, you're either, uh, either, you're either crazy or you're way more spiritual than me hello my friends you think I'm gonna be in a church like that because if this guy can't he's the pastor and can't even hear from God what makes you think he's gonna hear from God about what I need to be delivered out of he's not even gonna know how to set me free because he has no authority or he has no ear to God to set me free come on I'm I'm helping somebody if you'll listen to me okay number three the man cried out day and night Many people that are in bondage are crying out day and night for deliverance and looking for a real anointing and power and move of the Spirit that will set them free. Golly. Listen, can I give you, man, I feel the Holy Ghost all over me. Just talking about this. Some of you is watching this and you, you are bitter towards church and church people. Because you're so sick of the games. You're so sick of the protocol. You're so sick of the ritualistic garbage that's day in and day night, day, day in and day night. The programs, the rituals, the religious protocol. You go in day and night. You, you punch your card every Sunday. You do your religious duty as the deacon, as this. Some of y'all may even be pastors. And you're just so sick inside. And you're saying, where? Oh God, where is the miracles of our fathers? Where is the power of God? that will set men free where are the intercessors that will pray until something breaks from heaven man I feel the Holy Ghost where is the fire of God that came on the altar when Elijah prayed and he began to intercede and you're not seeing it you're not seeing any repentance you're not seeing the altars filled with the with people crying and wailing and repentance and wanting to turn to God my friend I'm telling you this this generation people my age and younger they're looking for what's real they want the real deal we're sick of the religious games we're sick of the protocol listen you can keep your three points in a poem and your nice little message I want the power of God that will set me free I want a man of God who come up to me and get up in my face who hears from God and says get out of that mess get away from those dead things uh, the Spirit of God shows me that you're dwelling in tombs and you need to get out I need a man of God who hears from God who can tell me where I'm at but listen we've got people that are too worried about filling their pockets and filling their churches with people and entertaining them and tickling their ears rather than than cultivating a, a move of God and letting the fires of the holy flame of God burn on the altar until men become until it draws men where where are the men who will lift up Jesus until all men are drawn unto him my friends this man was bound and he was even though he was bound by a legion in him was still hope and in him it was 
my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Inside of him was, the, his soul was crying out day and night, set me free. Oh, that somebody would set me free. And here's Jesus all the way on the other side of the sea. And while Jesus is praying alone in his prayer time, I could see him in a mountain somewhere. The Bible doesn't say this, but I'm telling you, I feel like as he was praying, the Lord spoke to him. His heavenly father spoke to him. He showed him a vision and whatnot. And he says, do you hear? If, if you'll strain out all the, all the distractions, around you can you hear that voice crying from over across the sea from the gatherings that's a soul that that is crying out for deliverance that's a soul that is that is bound and, and that needs to be set free and no one in that region can set him free because they're bound by their traditions and they're bound by their their doctrines and their, their traditions of men but but if you will go over there I, I desire to set him free and listen my friends if you'll if you'll turn the TV off if you'll turn the cell phone off turn the iPad off turn these distractions off and begin to seek the face of God in your prayer time and your closet my friends it it's when it's then that God will say that neighbor down the street that no one ever talks to I want you to go down him go down there because that man is bitter and nobody could ever set him free but if you'll go down there and and let him have an encounter with a relationship with a true and living God he desires relationship and not religion it's in your intercessory prayer time in your closet the Lord may speak to you and say when you go to Walmart today I know you set out I know you set out Paul to go on a business trip which you thought was as your prisoner going on a business trip Paul but I have a destiny for you listen God may say I know you're going to Walmart to get a loaf of bread but there might just be somebody there that's been in a wheelchair for 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 10 years that has been given a diagnosis from the doctors that they'll never walk again but you you have the same spirit in Christ dwelling in you that raised Christ from the dead and if you'll just listen to me and you'll be obedient when I send you to Walmart not only you Will you come out with a loaf of bread? But you'll come out with a man skipping and leaping who will be set free if you'll just lay hands on them and obey the gospel. And what could God do in your city and your region if we would just have an ear to heaven and an ear to his spirit and be obedient? Whew. Man. Number four. I'm almost done, guys. Wow. Notice the man was cutting himself. This is the classic... Uh, Example, this is the classic manifestation of people who are cutters. You ever heard of cut? They take razor blades, cut it themselves. Self-affliction, uh, suicide, suicidal tendencies. These are people who are bound by deep depression and many times demonic possession and oppression. And they're desperate for deliverance and peace in their life. Again, this man had all these traits, my friends. Now, here's what I want to show you. Let's go back down here. Okay. Um, now, okay, we know the story. Jesus sends uh, the, the, the demons to the herd of swine and they drown themselves. So those who fed, the, uh, here's, watch what happens, right? So the, 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 the swine drown themselves in the sea, verse 14. So those who fed the swine, by the way, if you do a historical uh, background in this, you'll discover that they were raising these pigs up as uh, offerings to Zeus, an idol god. That's why there was pigs there, okay? So those who fed the swine fled, and they told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what it was that happened. Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon-possessed. Listen, the whole city knew who this man was, right? Because it says it right here. And, and they saw the one who had been demon-possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind. Now, you would think when you saw this that they would be screaming, shouting, running. Woo, praise God, hallelujah, revival, break out in the city. No, it says they were afraid. And those who saw it told them how it happened to him. So they even testify. They said, look, this man, this Jesus of Nazareth came over here with his disciples and set this man free. And he, then he tells them the story about the swine. Listen to verse 17. Here's the sad part. Then they began to plead with Jesus to depart from the region. My friends, these people, a couple things here, ready? Number one, these people were involved in idol worship. Number two, they were afraid because no one could ever set 
a man free like this. No one ever had this authority. So when it came along, it, they were afraid. Many of you are afraid of the supernatural. Somebody's listening to this today and you believe in what's called sensationism, which means that the spirit of God has been departed. It means it went out with the fourth and the fourth century with the early apostles and there's no need of miracles. There's no need of signs and wonders. And some of you, uh, you, you, so you disregard any miracles, you disregard any healings, you disregard anything supernatural. And then there's another group of people that may be listening and you believe anything supernatural, anything miracles, anything healing is of the devil. That's the same same mentality that these people had because when this man who was bound in chains and fetters and no man could set him free when he was setting his right man right mind instead of them embracing revival to the city they rejected it because of fear how many things have you rejected of fear how many people has rejected the baptism of the holy ghost because you were told by the traditions of men that it was of the devil and not of god you were told not don't, don't go down into that prayer line and and get laid hands on because you're sick because that that's not of the devil because God doesn't heal today or you bet you better be careful because we don't believe in all that that supernatural stuff's of the devil come on guys that's exactly the mentality that this these individuals ha had and they were became they became afraid of what they did not know listen ignorance is the biggest one of the biggest factors of of hindering the move of God and then not only that so they they begged Jesus to get out of the city. They they rejected revival. But watch. And when he so here's Jesus packing up his stuff. He gets into the boat. And here comes the man who was demon possessed. And he begged him that he might be with him. Listen, honey, I'm telling you right now, if I was bound like this guy and none of these jokers could set me free, I guarantee you one thing, if somebody came along and had the power to set me free, just like Elisha, when he's when when Elijah threw the mantle on him and said, I don't know what you just, golly, I feel the anointing again. Here it comes again. Whew. I don't know what you just threw on me, man of God, but there ain't nobody. I've never experienced anyone with the presence and anointing of God like you've got on you. And and I, I've been to all these places and no one is walking this kind of authority. And I want what you've got. And my friends, if you ever experience the glory of God, you'll never be satisfied with normal. You'll never be satisfied with apathetic. You'll never be satisfied with tradition, with programs, and with religion. You will desire the deep calling unto deep the deep things of God my friend this is what you will desire and this is what happened this man in the Gadarene said he he comes to Jesus and he begs him let me go with you and that's what Elisha did he went and burned his oxen the oxen the tools that he used to work with he kissed his mother and father goodbye and says I'm I'm going after this man of God and listen it's not about the person it was about what Elijah carried on him and he said I want that mantle I want to walk in that anointing I want to walk in that power and whatever I got to do I'm going to do it and that and we all know the story listen those the Bible says in Hebrews he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him the Bible says those who hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled and here and even Moses said that he said Lord he goes I don't want your hand the children of Israel was satisfied with the hand of God I want the face of God I want the he said show me your glory remember that and the Lord said Moses I can't show you my face because if I show you my face uh, my glory can wipe out nations it will kill you and we all know the story of that but Moses was so hungry for that because my God he dealt 80 days on the mountain 40 days in fasting no bread no water and then he comes down and he goes right back up 40 days and for and when he came down his face so shone with the glory of God that people were fearful to look at him listen so he says, here's what Jesus said. But I'm paraphrasing. It's right here in verse 19. He says, look, I can't, you can't go with me. But he, wh wh here's what Jesus' plan was. He says, go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. And he departed and began to proclaim at Decapolis all that Jesus had done for him and all marveled. Listen. Oh, the, I pray that somebody would have an encounter with Jesus today, that you would let Jesus Christ, who is standing at the right hand of the Father right now, if you 
would just, I, I pray that somebody would just embrace a relationship with him today. Repent of your sins. Turn from your sins and wicked ways. Ask Christ to come into your heart, come into your life, and begin to walk with him every day and glean from his spirit. Take time to pray to him. Read the word. Let it fill you till it overflows out of you. My friends, you, one person can turn a whole household a whole city upside down when i got saved at 23 years of age my mother was backslid my stepdad was bitter towards god but god used me over a period of five to seven years i led my mom back to the lord and then my my stepdad was on his dying on his deathbed and I came into the hospital and God allowed me to have opportunity to speak into his ear and I believe with all my heart that he accepted Christ and he's on and he, he went to be with the Lord and the Lord used me uh, there was a man whom I became friends with, I shared the gospel with, and then within two years after me uh, uh, leading him to the Lord, he died of cancer, and he's in heaven today, all because of one testimony. We overcome the devil. The, uh, we overcome the the uh, the devil by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, and we love not our lives unto death, my friend. I'm going to ask you today that I know this is a lot to take in. But God has a purpose for every person. If you're listening to this, stop playing with apathy. Stop settling for normal. It is not God's will for you just to get a little dab will do you, a little bit of Jesus to put in your pocket. and or a, People has this crowbar salvation. What do you mean crowbar salvation? Or a tire iron. You want Jesus to be put in a trunk like a tire iron, and most of the time you guys forget you even have it in the trunk until you blow a tire, and then all of a sudden you go, oh, my tire iron's in the trunk. I'm glad I brought that with me. Most, A lot of people have Jesus. They want Jesus to put, they, they want to put him in the trunk just for fire insurance. They want salvation, but they don't want to make him as Lord. I challenge you today to not only make Jesus your Savior, but make him your Lord as well. Many will come unto me and say, Lord, Lord, did we not do this and do that in your name? He say, I depart. He'll say, depart from me. I never knew you. He says, why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you to do? My friends, here's the bottom line. God has a reason that he's ordering your footsteps. If you're a child of God, the steps of a righteous man or woman are ordered of the Lord. What would happen today if you got a loan in your prayer time and ask the Lord to direct your steps and lead you. What could you turn upside down? Who could you turn upside down for the glory of Almighty God? My friends, I hope this message has been a blessing to you. Again, this will be free on YouTube, but they're all this will be available on MP3 and CD as well, so you can get that in your hands and you can share it with others. I believe this message, man, I felt the anointing of God on this, and I really believe people got touched by this and a seed was planted into them. If anything, I would just love to hear what God has done for you and how he, I pray that this, uh, th that there would be a fire imparted in you and that you would take the fire out and it would begin to spread in your region, in your city and where you're at. Amen. So again, I just, I, I want to pray for you real quick. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for those that are listening today by YouTube, by CD, by MP3, however they may hear this, Lord. I thank you that, Lord God, that you're stirring up the flames of revival. Lord, what is the definition of revival? Revival is to revive that which was once uh, burning, uh, to re revive that once that once was awake, but it's, it's slumbered. I pray that there is a real revival coming and stirring in the hearts of the believers and those who have fallen into an apathetic state, those sleeping uh, virgins that has allowed the oil to go dry and their lamps and their wick is not trimmed and their flame is going out. But God, I believe that the Holy Spirit, God, is putting fresh oil in somebody's lamp, that, that, that they're allowing that wick to be trimmed and they're allowing the flame to begin to burn again. Lord, I believe in Lord God that people will be saved through this message. I believe people will be impacted by this message. I believe people will give their heart to you as not only their Savior, but God, they'll make you their Lord. And God, I believe that, Lord, through them, you will change their circumstances. Circumstances, God, that you, you will help them reach their family. You will help them reach their co-workers. You will help them reach their husband, their wife, their kids, whatever the case may be. God, whatever their gatherings is, 
I thank you, Lord. I thank you for the, the power and the authority in Jesus' name to set people free. Right now, by the authority in Jesus' name, I declare you're being set free. I declare every chain broken. I declare every fetter broken. I declare every shackle broken off of you. I break oppression off of you. I break depression off of you. I break suicidal tendencies off of you. I come against every spirit of suicide, oppression, and depression. I bind it off of you in Jesus' name. And I command you to be set free from the crown of your head to the soul souls of your very feet. Lord, I'm asking, Lord, that God, that you would begin to set people free from dead churches. You would begin to set people free from dead relationships. Set free people from dead things. The Bible, the word of the Lord says, come out from among them and be separate, say the Lord, and touch not the unclean, the dead things. But he says, and I will embrace you. I will receive you into myself and you shall be a son and you shall be a daughter. The word of the Lord says in Jeremiah, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. God, I thank you, Lord, that you are flam flaming or, or you're, you're, you're fanning a flame, God, in these people's hearts, God. And they're beginning to burn for you again, God. And Lord, I just thank you and I praise you God, for the great testimonies that shall come forth. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. Again, this is Ricky Scaparo. This is End Time Headlines.